All right, so this is a, a slide that I adopted from a talk by uh, Dr. Amgad Hanna uh, at a recent course. Um, I thought it was very helpful and I wanted to go through it with you. So this helps to think about how do we differentiate between radiculopathy or a spine problem and neuropathy or a peripheral nerve problem. So right off the bat, the history again is, is so important. So when patients with a spine issue, typically they'll complain of midline back pain that radiates down the extremity. Say, doctor, I have pain in my, my back, it goes into my buttocks, it goes down my leg to the top of my foot. In a, in a patient with neuropathy, they usually don't have um, back pain. Back pain's common, they may, but typically they complain, let's say, of a common peroneal neuropathy. I have knee pain, I have pain along the lateral aspect of my, my calf. Really want to make sure it fits that dermatome. Um, similarly, you think about weakness in, in a spine issue you're more proximal, probably more nerves are affected. There'll be multiple muscles that are, um, are weakened. In a neuropathy, usually the degree of weakness is much greater. There's paralysis, there's atrophy, and it's usually for a single nerve. All right, so as you, as you move more distally in the nervous system, things kind of hone in and you have a, a more, in terms of sensory loss, a more well demarcated area. Um, whereas in a spine issue, um, some of the dermatomes will overlap, more than one dermatome may be involved the sensory loss is a little bit less well demarcated. Um, other exam maneuvers. So the Sperling sign is a test to look for a cervical um, radiculopathy or degenerative disease. Basically, you have a patient um, look to one side and, and exert an axial force or load on their head and see if that reproduces their symptoms. Um, the straight leg test, when you have a patient laying supine, you can um, lift up their leg when it's um, extended at the knee and see if that reproduces some of their symptoms um, running down their leg. And then we discussed a Tinel sign, basically tapping on a common entrapment site and looking for an electrical shock or reproduction of symptoms. Um, you know, a lot of people have studied the sensitivity and specificity of these tests. You know, the studies vary, but I think like anything else, you want to use it as another part of your um, workup and always take it with a, a grain of salt. Uh, we discussed EMG, nerve conduction. Um, you could take a look at the paraspinal muscles. The thought is that if there's a, a spine issue, that it may be affecting these paraspinal muscles that come off the spine more proximally. And this can be um, checked on an, an EMG um, if you alert the, the uh, person doing the study to your, your clinical question. And then of course, imaging. Um, you know, the germ disease is very common as, as we get older and you may see some findings, uh, but really wanna see if, if the findings are impressive enough to explain the symptoms on a spine MRI or if it could be a nerve problem. Similarly, for a nerve issue, um, you'd expect to see um, occasionally some changes, but not always. Um, things you're looking for would be a tumor or a mass, either from the nerve or impinging on the nerve, sometimes some increased signal in the nerve or edema. Whereas in a spine issue, those studies uh, really should be normal. Okay, just something to, to keep in mind here. Um, we don't have to go through each of these entities, but um, there are lots of different types of acquired neuropathies. And I think it's useful to think about different categories um, here. Things that you may see, Guillain-Barre, um, CIDP, vasculitis. Uh, metabolic, diabetes, infectious, things like leprosy, um, toxic lead poisoning, and critical illness neuropathy. So always to keep in mind um, if there are any of these predisposing factors at play. And then we, we discuss some of the genetic underpinnings of some of these diseases. Oops. And, and similarly, um, some additional diagnoses, we think about myopathies, neuromuscular junction disorders, um, really having a, a neurology colleague help um, to flush these out is, is useful. Uh, Parsons-Turner syndrome or, or a type of inflammatory um, condition and then lower motor neuron disease. So I, I put these here more just to be aware of them that you know there are other entities uh, in the more so the neurology world, um, but it does apply as, as, a, as a neurosurgeon to be aware of these. And um, I just wanted to, to bring some attention to that. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.